Okay, y'all, what's up? So, I wanted to show y'all a couple of things right quick. So, we got some rain. Ooh, the better part of the night and almost all day. Hey, Garfield, you coming out? But I wanted to show y'all this right quick. I hope I can get it before we move. I just so happen to see this and I figured I'd get my camera. I hope you don't. Okay. Y'all see that assassin bug? Y'all see what he got in his mouth? Some other kind of bug. Ooh. This is on my okra, y'all. So if you in doubt about what assassin bugs do, assassin bug, I'm gonna come in here and pollinate this okra right quick. Just don't even worry about me. Just gonna come in here and pollinate this okra. You keep having your meal. I'm not gonna disturb that. Uh, but you see, he walked off. But he left his little prey. Y'all see that little flying thing down in there? But he walked off. He on the other side of the underside of the leaf. I don't know if y'all y'all see him under there. But uh, yeah. So these flowers over here, I'm pollinating them because it's gonna rain all day today, and I don't think it's gonna be very many. Uh, like the bees and stuff that usually come down in these. I don't think they're going to be out here today. I haven't seen Nan be today. Nary. <coughs> but since we got all that good rain, it opened up. All these okra flowers decided to open today. So, um, and I want to make sure that I get my okra, which you don't have to do this. I believe okra, the way that the flower is made, I believe it'll pollinate anyway, but but I'm finna make sure. Okay, so that's the okra. I got set lots of blooms. I've been eating okra off of here. I don't think I mentioned it, and I'm sorry, I was supposed to have a video out to y'all, but child. You gonna help me pick? You ain't gonna help me pick nothing. You in there on your own accord. Look at all those up there that are ready. It's a wasp up there too. Um, I've been picking beans uh, regularly. Uh, I'm gonna just kind of show you what's going on right quick and then I'm gonna hop into something. Um, but I wanted to show y'all these. I think these are either bikino, bikino peppers or bird peppers. I can't remember which one, but I'm gonna tell y'all I've never had a pepper plant be this productive and have this many peppers on. And um, some of my fish peppers, y'all see that red down there? That fish pepper is all the way ripening. Uh, let me put these wings down, the mailman's coming. I'm gonna collect this mail from him. And for those of y'all wanting watermelon seeds, I haven't forgotten you. <clears throat> I just harvested one watermelon today and I knew I was gonna harvest it. And I wanted to throw those seeds in there. So the people that ask for watermelon seeds, you're going to get a whole bunch of seeds, I assure you. But yeah, I've never seen. This is two pepper plants up here in the front. And then I have, ooh, this one has some flowers open. These are the first little flowers that I've seen open on these. I'm breaking a lamb. What lamb am I breaking? And that's got peppers on it. I'm going to leave it. It might heal up. I don't know. Uh, let me get the mail from the mail, man. <clears throat> hey, how you doing? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You got it? Yeah, got it. You too. All right. I'm going to throw that down because it ain't nothing important. I already know what's in there. Um, but yes, I, uh, this one has started putting on blooms i hate i broke this branch but it is what it is it had a couple of peppers on it too oh well the pepper plant will just take it as i'm pruning it but yeah those are the first flowers on that that i've seen open i think those are scotch bonnets i don't think i grew any other of the peppers if y'all ever notice ghost peppers and all that they get that pretty curly leaf i didn't grow any other uh, so i'm gonna pick this so this is this fish pepper and this is that they'll get bigger than this this is the first one but i wanted to taste it hmm 
Oh, yeah. I like this. So, I was under the impression that this fish pepper was going to be hot as fire. Because I, I think I had mentioned to y'all the, uh, they, uh, let me get up a little higher. Sometimes you get into the tip and that's the season. It does have some heat to it, but it has a nice, it has some sweetness to it, but it has a really nice pepper taste. These fish peppers is good. You tell me again why we quit growing in. And I know, and I'm going to be honest, I don't think fish peppers are supposed to get huge, and that might be part of the problem. In America, we have a we have a problem with size, you know, and, and I could point to a whole lot of stuff that causes us to have a problem with size. Um, but yeah, these are good, and the, the heat is not, it's not a make you cry kind of heat, but it's a lingering heat, like, kind of lingers and hangs around on the tongue a little bit. I could imagine when you cook with it, it probably would mellow out on some more and give you a really, really nice pepper flip. So if you like peppers, but you don't want it to be so hot that you cry or so hot that your nose and your ass and all that run, because some of these peppers is too much. I can't handle them. Or either, like, because when I use a scotch bonnet, I don't cut it up. I put it in that hole, and then when I get through with my stuff, I go back in there and pull it out. And I don't even pierce it. Some people pierce. Mm -mm, I can't even handle it pierced. It mess my food up where I can't eat it. <clears throat> but if you like a nice little mellow heat, because like now I'm still I still taste the heat, but I taste more of the peppery taste. Yeah, this is good. Now I ain't get up there. Can y'all see? I didn't get up there where the seeds at, because I want to save those seeds. I want to save those. So I'm going to set this pepper down and I'm going to remember to come back and come get it. And I'm going to finish the pepper and get the seeds out. But, um, and if anybody wants, well, I'm going to wait till later and see how many seeds I get out of that. Um, I think I still have more fish pepper seeds, but I'm not 100% for sure. But yeah, if you want to, oh, there's a bee. As I talk and say something, I say I didn't see no bees, but I see some now. But earlier it was pouring, I didn't see any. But there are no female flowers out there. I'm going to let the bees have those male flowers. But yeah, that fish pepper is good. And I see another red one on here. Well, it's not all the way red, but I'm going to get it off so y'all can see it. But y'all see the stripes. And like I said, they will get bigger. Understand that pepper plant, these grew up so big and that got shaded out. I'm going to show you my other fish pepper plant. Um, but fish peppers don't get that big. I think they get three or four inches. I don't think they get that big. Um, but you can see these plants over here are much bigger. Like, there's that little one down there. This one is double that size. And it does have peppers on it. And it's making flowers. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six variegated fish peppers here. I have one here. And I have the one over there. I have two of these, like I said, I think these are bikinos, if I remember what they look like correctly. It's two of those, and I'm almost certain that these are scotch bonnets, because I didn't grow anything else with those types of leaves. These are Turkish eggplants. They're coming back at the, the spider mite invasion. They're making blooms. Hopefully they do something. I said this was called Bishop's Cap. Y'all see that lizard jump like that? Sorry, buddy, I ain't trying to hurt you. I didn't see you. You're green. The leaves are green, you know. A stupid humans you know anyway this is called bishop's crown now i mean i think i called it bishop's hat or something but it's called bishop's crown or bishop's cap and this one is loaded with a bunch of peppers and i finally see one turning here and I, when i finally taste one actually this one's even further along but if you're wondering why they call it that if y'all know what a bishop's crown looks like that's what the peppers kind of look like this one's probably a better representation there you go. So that pepper is, has a lot of them on there too. Um, very uh, productive. Uh, these are also scotch bonnets because like I said, I didn't grow anything else that that has that pretty curl leaf. Like I said, usually it's super hot. Oh, he came back. So he saw me there fooling with it. And now he's back up here finishing it off. You see his back perched on top of it? I guess they suck all the guts out of the inside. I have no clue how they work, but I like them. Love you, assassin bugs. So, um, 
I want to show y'all this. Look at all those up under there, all those ground cherries. And steadily making flowers. I mean, on every limb, you just see ground cherries. So I can't wait for those to get ready. A couple of days ago, the flowers on my Jamaican soil started opening. The calyxes started opening. And if y'all look, it just looks like Jamaican soil forest. So y'all just, you know, y'all look at that. It's a beautiful sight, I'm telling you. And then, this is my cushion, which I'm not going to be able to let it grow up here like this. But you have to be careful with squash. They will climb your stuff. Um, I'm going to try to break these tendrils as gently as I can. And try to lay this. It's attached on so many places. Try these things. They hold on. They hold on for good long. They hold on. Like a Kardashian hold on to a black man. Ooh, cha. Turning loose. Just a little bit. Jesus. Boy, I get so sick of him. He gets on my nerves. Y'all ever seen somebody? You try to. You try to uh, tell them nicely. No, I'm not interested. What have you, what have you. And they keep wearing the hell out of you. He's going to make me put something on him. That's what's going to happen. He's going to make me put something on him. So I'm going to lay that down like that. Just like I had to do that one the same way. There's Felix. Hey, Felix. Who? Garfield. Felix don't want to play right now, okay? It's wet out here. He said when it's wet, it's just like when you're driving. You, have to, you can't drive the same way when it's wet as when it's dry. You have to be cautious, okay? Okay, Garfield. Okay, Garfield. What, baby? What? Tell the people. Tell them. You got to look up and tell them. Okay. Well, yeah, there you go. They want to see your little face. They see Garfield's face all the time. Oh, is that what you're saying? Replacement? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, you understand. Yes. You see that bigger? Do you see that bigger? That's, that's uh-huh. That's exactly it. So, yeah, y'all, everything, I wanted to show y'all that, and I, I wanted to touch on something. I said I would talk about hydrophobic versus hydrophilic soils. So, I just wanted to kind of get started on talking about that. I see an okra that's ready. So, this okra that I'm growing, I'm almost positive that this is a motherland okra. I'm almost positive. I got to check my seeds. I could be wrong. But it's short like that there. If it gets too much... I know y'all gonna say, "Golly, that's short." Yeah, um, they all this split, uh, uh, Clemson spineless and all this stuff. Why people bred that? Why y'all think that's called Clemson spineless? Clemson University bred that, or whatever they, whatever they school is. They the Tigers. It's in one of them Carolinas. I think it's in North Carolina. Uh, they bred okra to be spineless. So let me tell you, when you grow these these okra varieties that are African, they don't have huge spines on them, but they got spines on them. So be careful when you pick them. But um, I'm going to press you all that okra. Boy, I know it's good. Woo! Anyhow, I'm going to press you if you ain't never had raw okra before. Give that a go. I know what you're going to say. Oh, you didn't watch that. It got rained on. It's good enough. It'll be all right. Um, if you that, you know, that hard, you know, wash your okra. I'm not telling you to do what I do. See, a lot of y'all get out here and think I say I'm promoting to live the way I live. I don't promote nothing. I don't promote nothing except for you to grow your food and leave me the hell alone. That's all I promote. Uh, and I, when I say leave me alone, I mean leave me alone as far as negative stuff. See, let me tell you something. And don't grow. Don't grow. Ooh, the clouds getting dark. Y'all see the sky? I'm finna get ready to go in the house. Uh, when y'all grow these, if I sent you lady cream peas, any of these peas I be growing, get ready to be harvesting every day. Every day be harvesting. Because, I mean, I can't come out here and get a moment's rest. Just as soon as you think you got it all harvested, some more come up. I'm going to have to spray these. When it rain hard like this, 
Let me show y'all something. When you haven't gotten rain in a long time. Y'all watch my mail cats up there. When you haven't gotten rain in a long time. Perfect environment for the for the butterflies. When it cools off, they show up. They come lay them babies. And then here I am out here picking. My stuff was perfect. Didn't have nary hole. Didn't have nary hole. Until it cooled off and it's raining. And see, they, they know that because you can't spray. I mean, you can spray your stuff, but it's just going to get washed. It's going to get washed right off. And they know that. These bugs are smart. You know, survival of the fittest. But I'm going to pick this off as a kind of preventative measure. We on a downhill swing, people, for us, uh, the rest of the season and all these worms and things. Hopefully these butterflies, look at this, harlequin bug. Uh, I hope that, let me look down in here because this is, see, right in here. This is where they love it. All the little tender. I see you down in there. You can come out of there too. Anyway. Uh, this went on down here swinging. Hopefully the butterflies and things have left me alone. But if you haven't watched my old video, I think I entitled it something like all my life I had to fight or something. And here come the rain. It's touching me now. I feel it. But I'm trying. I don't want to. And your stuff be like this, you don't even want to leave it. You want to get these worms off of here. Because I'm telling you, when I go in the house, it's going to be smuggest bug. They're going to be a fool out here. But, um, y'all be waiting, though. I got a video about hydrophobic and hydrophilic soils that I'm going to, right after this, I'm going to start filming. Because this rain will allow me to kind of show y'all what I need to show y'all. So... Till next time, I'm going to see you guys later. Oh, well, let me show you one more thing. Y'all see this plant, how it laid over? Look at it, all these individual collard plants. So you could take these and break them off and root them. And you'd have 10, 11 collard plants out of one collard plant, if, if you so chose. Same thing here. You see how this branched? See all that? You could have your bunch of collard plants. Because if y'all y'all remember when I stuck those little pieces of collards in the ground over here, don't think they did. They're not dead. I'm going to reach in here and try to show y'all. See them here. They rooted. They rooted and got nice size. And I could take those and, and uh, break those off and root those and make plants. So, always be mindful about your collars. I had another one in here, but I think I pulled it up by accident. Man, once I pulled it up, it was a wrap. But yeah, I just wanted to show y'all. So when those stems get long and lean over and all that, cut them off close to the ground. If you cut them off right there, all of those where those leaves were, those were nodes. Y'all see where it's self-seeded? I let those seeds fall. But you see how this one, I cut the top off of this one. See how it just branched out? So hell, if they lean over too far, cut the heads off. They'll branch out again, just like look. Y'all see here one coming out? So technically, I could cut that off right there. They'll have send a whole brand new stock out, but um, I kind of been leaving my stuff alone for the most part. And believe it or not, those little leaves, they eat just the same as the big ones. Matter of fact, they cook faster. But I'm going to tell you, if you're just using it for fertilizer, what difference do it make what size your leaves are? Because I use a lot of these for fertilizer. Um, I'm pulling these off right now, dropping them on the ground. But I usually go back there and put them in my thing. See how look how that's branched? See that? And it's just, it wants to do that. So, y'all don't have to pull your brassicas and keep planting them over and over again. That's why some of this stuff stay out here six years, seven years. <laughs> I say I'm going to plant more seeds, and I will. I plant more seeds here and there, just like I'll show you the new ones I planted once I started from seed. All these are the ones I started from seed. All those ones I planted close together and didn't thin. You see how? Now, they will get bigger than this, but you can see the ones with the real good genetics, they are already good size. But I don't know how many that is. How many it is. Oh. German time don't like the heat. But yeah, I just wanted to leave y'all with that. So yeah, when it goes to seed, cut its head off. Harlequin bug. Harlequin bug. That's another thing. When that rain come, all the eggs and stuff that was laying dormant that couldn't hatch. See when this disease like this? I'm going to put all this in the fertilizer. 
Harlequin bugs got to that. Anyway, uh, it, it all them eggs get moistened and they, they hatch out. Boy, that drives me insane. But anyway, I'm gonna go in because it's gonna start back pouring. Uh, I feel it. I feel the rain as it is, but I will leave you one last Harlequin flick. All right, y'all. Till next time. See you guys later.